Good morning. It's 9.30 a.m. here in my time. Cut, um, just going to make, this is actually going to be a quick video. It actually is. This was a video that I had done yesterday, but um, upon further review, so I'm going to redo it. You will need your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. But before we begin, guess what? You, my American countrymen, which this video is more pertaining onto, guess what? Did you know that Donald Trump was supposed to win the election on December 12th? Uh, did Brad, it's the 20th. Yeah, I know. Surprise, surprise, that didn't happen. But of course not. There is a channel out there <clears throat> that goes by the name of God Unlimited, all capital letters, and you go to that individual or individual's channel, and you will find in his videos, or their videos, a video talking about how Trump is going to win the election on the 12th. <laughs> Yeah, and also, too, their little channel over there, they have that option where you join in order to unlock more content, and they also sell t-shirts. Oh, anyway, anyway, go ahead and look up that video. But according to this man who is calling himself a prophet, <laughs> um, according to him, God said that, yeah, yeah, Trump was supposed to win the election on the 12th. And when you look at this specific video about the, the 12th thing with Donald Trump on God Unlimited's channel, and you go to the comment section, you'll see that there are people calling this false prophet out on that. And you'll also see on some of the responses that the channel or whoever it is gave to these people, uh, something around the lines of, oh, it's not over yet, it's just beginning. Oh, it's not a false prophecy, pretty much is what he's saying, and then he gives another link to some other thing. But regardless, <clears throat> false prophecy, a false prophet. God unlimited. Yeah, yeah. And now, apparently... There's a new one, a new one, and that is apparently now on January the 18th, 2021 is when Trump is going to win the presidency or something like that. <laughs> and you have to remember, too, on the 20th of January here in America is when Kamala Harris is sworn in to be the president. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, uh, smoking Joe Biden. That's when he <laughs> gets sworn in to be the president. Um, there is something to consider about all this. When it comes to President Trump, by the way, it is quite accurate to, to refer onto him as a loose cannon in many respects. And the truth is, and every one of you in my country kind of have this nagging feeling, I would bet, that at any given moment, Donald Trump could declare himself sovereign and declare martial law, which will, of course, elevate him you know, establish himself as sovereign and hence also putting off the coming presidency of Kamala Harris. <clears throat> Excuse me, Joe Biden, smoking Joe. That is a possibility. At any given time, Trump could do that. Will he do it? I don't have the slightest. But a thing to consider is what if he did, right? What if he did? Around here in my little apartment complex, when the uh, election results were revealed that Kamala Harris won the presidency, um, I'm sorry, I, I keep saying Kamala Harris. 
<laughs> uh, Joe Biden won the presidency, okay? Um, around here, we heard God Bless America playing. You also look around and search online, you'll see that uh, generally the people of my country seem to be happy that uh, Kamala Harris is... <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, Joe Biden has been elected president. What would happen if Trump declares himself sovereign and instills martial law? You talk about a trigger event to get the riots going even 10,000 times fold worse than they are. Think about it. That is possible. That is possible. And that's something you need to keep in mind because until Kamala Harris, <clears throat> excuse me, Joe Biden <laughs> is sworn in as the President of the United States, until that happens, in truth, we don't know what Trump is going to do. Rather, I should say, we don't know what the Jesuits are going to have. Donald Trump to do. Because, brethren, you have to remember this about America. America, right now, presently, is a Jesuit run nation. That cannot be denied. Oh, there won't be, of course, people will deny it, but when you look into the people who are in the higher offices in my country, Jesuits. America is an scapegoat, if you will, of the Vatican. Our American military are fighting wars at the dictate of the Vatican. Hence, we Americans are not that popular. And let's be honest, brethren. We're hated. We are. We Americans, we are pretty much hated out there. And if Trump declares himself sovereign, right? Martial law gets put into place. War is going to erupt in this country. Civil war. It's coming regardless. But if Trump declares himself sovereign, you know, martial law, that's going to get it going a lot quicker, a lot quicker. But then again, if nothing happens and then Kamala Harris, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Smoking Joe gets to the presidency for his, the little while that he will, um, <clears throat> eventually riots are going to come regardless. And also, too, you have to keep in mind, brethren, apparently that up in Canada, there are Chinese troops stationed in Canada. Also, there is an article out there that states that Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, has uh, set these guys up to pretty much overrun Canada. And there are, um, apparently there are links out there to this. Any of you can find these to verify. Go ahead and put them in the, uh, in the comments section and I will pin them. But um, yeah, apparently there are Chinese troops up in Canada. What happens if martial law gets declared sooner rather than later and we start destroying ourselves? Chinese troops in Canada could invade. You know that Eric John Phelps guy? He always said that, that America is going to be invaded by a foreign army. <laughs> Which has already happened because the Jesuits have long invaded America and taken over, yes. But a military army. Which Jesuits are, of course, but you know what I'm saying. Eric John Phelps has always said that, you know, he believes that foreign country like China is going to come and invade us and with the with Chinese troops in Canada that becomes a possibility and that's something 
Isn't that something? But getting back on point now, forgive me for that little rabbit trail. I love rabbit. I love rabbit with uh, teriyaki sauce and soy sauce and hot sauce. Very good. But never mind. <clears throat> these guys who are setting these dates about Trump going to win on the 12th, and then this new one about the January 18th, 2021. And when you look into that, you know who's linked onto that? There's a channel called Kingdom of Heaven is Coming. And that channel is linked to a one Chuck Pierce. Okay, if you don't know who that whack job is, go ahead and look if you're curious. And Kingdom of Heaven is Coming is also linked onto that Total nut job, Sid Roth. If you don't know who he is, good. But these people got unlimited with the 12th thing, and this Chuck Pierce, Sid Roth people, this channel, Kingdom of Heaven is Coming, all about these false dates <laughs> about when Trump is going to regain the presidency. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And see, people out there want to hear this kind of stuff. They, they really do. It's very disturbing. They want this kind of drama. Okay? Go to Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? Of course, you are expected to follow me along. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. In the deserts, excuse me. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord say it, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. You know, these usually it seems to be the care Catholics, the Pentecatholics, you know, the tongue talkers, blah, 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 guys, you know, who think uh, water dogs, as they are affectionately called. It's usually these types of people, and they confirm their false prophecies one with another. Okay? It's very, very weird. And when they fail, they always find a loophole to. to Say, well, oh, oh, it, it has, but it just, we haven't seen it yet or something like that. Um, never taking responsibility for themselves, but always saying that, oh, it, you know, God might have misspoken or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Verse 7. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say the Lord saith it? Albeit, I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because he have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. Remember that being against them. Remember that. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. <clears throat> Go to Deuteronomy now, chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. 
When it comes to false prophets, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, really doesn't have any, <laughs> any grace, really, for these people. Yes, they can get saved today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Yes, they can. But uh, they continue in their false prophecies, um, being led on by the devil. And false prophets are in a lot of trouble. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet... Thank you, brother. Or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, wait just a second there. I have an older video called Why Did God Tempt Abraham? Um, where I, I kind of get into this a little bit more deeper. Um, God is omnipresent, omniscient. He knows everything. He can see the future because he's not really uh, confined to our Time, if you will. Thank you, brother, for that one. Okay? He is outside of our time. The time that we, we know right here and now. Hence, you can see the future, the past, that kind of stuff. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, knows what's going to happen. Okay? Like um, people will point to when he said unto Abraham, Now I know that you fear the Lord. Uh, or whatever he said, excuse me, going off of memory. The knowing is relational. Okay? And I addressed that in that video. Not going to go off on that. But the knowing in that, uh, when he, in the temptation of Abraham, the knowing is relational because God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, knows the end from the beginning. Okay? He knows everything, He knows what's going to happen. Okay? So when you look at verse 3 here, For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Hold your place here. <clears throat> Hold your place here. And go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> Ah, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. One second, one second, brethren. Got to find this. Okay, sorry. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart. From iniquity. Okay? God knows everything. God knows what you're going to do. This right here, for the Lord your God proveth you, it's for your benefit that you may know that you truly love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. It is for your benefit because He knows what's going to happen. Okay? It's for your benefit to prove it to you, you know, self-examination, proving your own self, whether or not you are in the faith. Get it? Okay. I had to explain that very briefly. Like I said, I'm going to link the video for Why Did God Tempt Abraham where we get more into it. Okay. Let's continue now. <clears throat> Verse four, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. And keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Look at verse 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, 
which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Very quickly, now go to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Yes, our Lord God, Jesus Christ, our Father, really has harsh judgment upon false prophets. And under the dispensation of the law, which we just looked in, um, false prophets were to be put to death. Okay? They were to be stoned. We we are not going... I, uh, no, no. Today, in this dispensation, we don't go out to kill false prophets. No, 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 no. And I'm not saying that. However, God takes very seriously the offense unto him of those false prophets. Ezekiel chapter 14, okay? Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 9 unto verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 9 unto verse 11. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and will stretch out my hand upon him, and will destroy him from the midst of my people. Wait for it. Hold on. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet... Prophet, excuse me, brother, shall be even as the punishment of him that seek unto him. Okay? That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I will be their God, Seth, the Lord God. Okay. Now, verse 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. God doesn't deceive people, though. He doesn't lie to people. But it says right there, I, the Lord, have deceived thy prophet. That prophet. Excuse me. Have you ever read the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2? How Satan needs permission to attack People, especially those who are connected onto the Lord. Okay? Have you seen that? Have you read Job chapters 1 and 2? Go do that on your own time. Okay? Satan needs permission to do things to those whom are connected unto him. Okay? Okay? But it says, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Nothing happens without our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father's, Say so, okay? He's not a God that sits up there like, oh, oh, oh. no, no. Ain't nothing happening without his consent to do so or allowing the devil and his angels to do so. Let's prove that. Go to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Very pertinent chapter, by the way, for us today, uh, for our instruction in righteousness. Backstory, very quickly. Jehoshaphat and King Ahab got together to go to war. And King Ahab called for all these false prophets that were saying, Yeah, yeah, go to war. The Lord is with you. Yeah, you'll prosper. King Jehoshaphat, a godly king, who had issues, yes, but a godly king nonetheless, says unto Ahab, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here besides? King Ahab says, ah, There's one guy, yeah, Micaiah, but I hate him because he never prophesieth good to me, only evil. Meaning he told him the truth. Okay? Keep that in mind. You can read this whole chapter on your own time. Alright? <clears throat> we are going to read, that was the backstory. We are going to read in 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 20 under verse 23. Okay? And the Lord said, 
Who shall pers persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? He had a lot of false prophets saying, go up and prosper. Okay? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. You see that? Ah, wait. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. God allowed this lying spirit, the spirit to go forth and to be a lying spirit in all these false prophets. And when you look at verse 22, our Lord speaking here, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also, go forth and do so. See, nothing happens, brethren, without the Lord say so. Who really is in control? See, it's the Lord. Okay? Hence, it says, verse 23, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. Okay? Do you understand that? And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Do you understand that? That's very simple. That's very simple. He deceiveth no man, but he allows people to be deceived. He allows these devils who are speaking to these people on that channel, God Unlimited, to this channel, Kingdom of Heaven is Coming, Chuck Pierce, that whack job, Sid Roth. Devils are speaking to them because God has allowed that to happen. God has allowed what is befalling my nation of America because America is an ungodly nation. Okay? Run by the Jesuits. A puppet to the Vatican. For judgment against this nation is why Trump was selected. And also too, brethren, sisters, think about this. Again, we Americans, we're very hated out there. What happens? Okay, let, let's say the Trump thing, he doesn't do anything. Okay, just go with me, because we don't know yet. But go with me. Kamala Harris is sworn into office. Smoking Joe Biden is sworn into office. <laughs> People. Very quickly, okay? Listen to me. Smoking Joe is not going to be the figurehead president for far too long. It'll be just a matter of time. And then Kamala Harris is going to be the president. That is who the Jesuits want to put in place, is Kamala Harris. And God, I believe he's going to allow that to happen. And when Kamala Harris is the active, she'll be active anyway, but when she is the official president, because Joe Biden, whatever's going to happen to smoking Joe, who knows? The guy's crazy. The guy's nuts. Okay? He can't keep himself together. Okay, he's either going to do something that's going to get him kicked out or impeached, or he's just going to go schizo, whatever. Whatever's going to happen, I don't know. Don't really care. But once Kamala Harris is put in, 
knowing that America has a woman president, that's going to be a spark from the outside for people to start attacking us. You watch. You watch. Okay? But then, but now, I'm getting back a little bit on track. Okay? These people who are preaching these, you know, teaching these false dates about Trump and whatnot. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, uh, of reading verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like that channel God Unlimited does, that channel Kingdom of Heaven is coming, Chuck Pierce, Sid Roth, and all these other charismatic wing nuts. <laughs> I had to say that, okay? They are handling the word of God deceitfully. But have renounced, let's reread, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world. And of course, very quickly, one verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. A verse that you ought to have ingrained in your head. Okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Who is the little G God of this world? The devil. Satan. He is the little G God of this world. And channels like God Unlimited, this kingdom of heaven is coming, those are outlets of devils. They're liars. They are not of the church of the living God. They are wicked, filthy, false prophets whose damnation is just. And also, too, you, you must keep in mind 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit, that's a capital S, by the way, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in, him, in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. See, these, these false prophets who come up with this garbage um, just to get hype and get money. I mean, you, you go to that God Unlimited uh, channel, man. Like I said, they sell t-shirts. <coughs> really? Oh. Okay? They have no conscience. It's seared. Excuse me. Their conscience is seared. Okay? Their conscience is seared. Because you have to also remember, brethren, in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, 
verses 1 on to verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, a form of godliness, faking it, hmm. but denying the power thereof. And what does that say? From such, turn away. From such, turn away. Because remember, Brethren, too. Verse 13 in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Being deceived by devils allowed to give them these things. Their damnation is just. Look at that crazy guy Copeland. That these look at these people who come up with this kind of stuff. Look at them. They are of the devil. They are infested with devils and speaking lies. From such Turn away. Now, it is my earnest hope that those of you who are of the Church of the Living God, you're like, what, what are these idiots? And yes, I'm using that accurately. Idiots. Void of reason and logic. Okay? These false prophets are itching the ears, telling people what they want to hear, and selling t-shirts. Church of the living God, need I say unto you not to fall for these false prophets? I hope, I, I hope not. But those of you who call yourselves Christians and are not rather of the Church of the living God, You're going to fall for these false prophets. You're going to suffer the same fates as these false prophets. We've already looked at that. Because these people do not speak for the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They're liars. They're liars. Deceiving and being deceived. So please, any of you out there who may see this, please do not fall for these false prophets claiming to speak for the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as if he had given them a new revelation and they have seen nothing. They're speaking out of their own vanity and they have seen nothing. The Lord has, has not spoken unto these people. They're liars. Beware of these people. Okay? So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, like I said, this, uh, I wanted, uh, we had to remake this. Um, yeah, I, again, brethren, and those of you who are lost, just stay away from these, these idiots channel god unlimited kingdom of heaven is coming chuck pierce sid roth kenneth copeland if, if if you out there think that those guys are of the church of the living god actually saved men i truly do feel sorry for you i truly do if you're a novice or a babe 
Um, there are several brethren who you can look up here on YouTube who will teach you the truth of uh, of the scriptures. You know, Brother Brian, Brother Aaron Darren, okay? There are people out there who can teach you these uh, the, the truth of the scriptures because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, lives within those brethren. They do not. They're, he's not with these false prophets. Okay? So beware of that. Anyway, like I said, that's going to be it for this video. Got another video coming today. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm going to put a link, by the way, I forgot to tell you, about a do on a documentary about the Jesuit order. Okay? That should open up your eyes a little bit about who really runs this country. Okay? Sorry. I had to get that out um, before I forgot about it. Okay? Okay. See you in the next video.